Ah, man! It's episode two. I feel like we're almost done. We just started. We can hide this banner. That's enough. The stream has begun. The recording has begun. What's up, everybody? My name's Jay. This is episode two of Sunbeams, out of depth plays Sunbeams, an Icons RPG actual play. All that means is that we're playing a superhero role playing game called Icons, and we're trying to tell a cool story about two very cool superheroes named Labyrinth and Lazarus. Both people who created these characters had no idea the other one was starting their character with an LA name. They had no idea. And here we are. We just recorded episode one last week. If you haven't watched it yet, go watch that. Go watch that. What are you doing? Don't start with two. You start with one. We tell a self-contained story-ish in 12 episodes. We were only playing this for 12 episodes. And then we move on to a new, a new role-playing game. But we don't want to think about that right now because we get to really sink into icons for 11 episodes more, counting tonight. David, did I get did I math that right? Is it? I always go to David for the math. Uh, with 11 episodes left? I yeah. Mean, that's that's counting tonight, math. right? It's more, more counting. Including yeah. this one. Including this one. 11. Yes. Yeah. Wait, is counting not math? I mean, yeah, it is. I don't know. It is. Math just seems more. The complicated student becomes than the master. All right. <laughs> you send a kid to kindergarten; they know how to count to ten. Uh, you know, okay. I, I, don't, I don't necessarily think that they know okay. math at that juncture. I see what we're doing. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. What I was saying was is that we get to sink into this Icons game, a game that I did not know until I started trying to figure out what... I just knew I wanted to play a superhero game for Season 3. And here we are, playing a superhero game. And I found Icons, and I was like, this seems good enough. And <laughs> so, so far... <laughs> let me tell you something about superhero RPGs real quick. There's a lot of, a lot of shit out there. And uh, whoa, man, <laughs> there's a lot of shit. There's a lot it's of cool almost, stuff, too. There's a lot it's of all really super cool complex. Stuff. Let's say that like we found some like like a lot of them have something really cool, but they're just really hard to just play, play, play <laughs> what we're trying to do for this show. Yeah, this one works for our show, which yeah. isn't to say all the ones that we're not playing are shit because we did use them for the show. Some of them were actually very good. They just weren't conducive to the No, this one was pretty clear of like, if you want to do some other additional stuff that's not in this book, like clear it with the the GM and make it happen. And I was like, just all right. Just do it. That's what we need. Just. We, we like to use our creativity to we, yeah. create some people that uh, haven't been seen before. I like games that uh, allow me to just make it up sometimes. Exactly. And some of the games get very specific about physics. And uh, as you all just heard me figuring out one from 12, physics, I would be <laughs> a, a mess. I'd be a mess. The, the fourth screen would be occupied by, like, your the physics, physics uh, fact checker. I'd have a graphic. Would, no, it would just be that meme of the woman with all the calculus <laughs> going around her face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just... Excuse me, just let so me consult know, this, this Jay all the time. TI-83 that I purchased just for this occasion to play a superhero <laughs> game. Uh, yeah, so last session, guys, I haven't recapped a game in months. Last session, last episode, last issue. That's what we're saying it is, right? Last yeah. issue. We're playing comic books, brother. Last issue, uh, Zach... And Gracie Hartwell were at Malconian High School. That's the name of the school. Malconian High School, for those who listen to uh, Season 2 and Alice is Complete, you'll think that name is a little fucking crazy. And you'd be right. Uh, thanks, Dave. <laughs> they, 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 uh, they were about to do a huge speech 
a big uh, party celebration of the anniversary of Polymorph, the hero to end all heroes of Solus Bay, where our story takes place, featuring action movie star Nick Northcutt, who is going to say a few words about persevering in the the face of uh, opposition and and despair and tragedy. And unfortunately, Nick Northcutt was using, possibly using the, allegedly, allegedly using this situation to further himself rather than really make this about a hero who sacrificed his life to save Zach Lapidus, David's character, Lazarus. In fact, it was that sacrifice that turned Zack into a superhero. Which we'll get to see at some point. Um, him being a superhero. <laughs> yeah, we weren't superheroes the whole first Yeah, nobody episode. was superheroes the entire first episode. Um, anyways. Just trying to do super things without revealing ourselves. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, hey, I'm, I melted. That was pretty super. You did True. turn into a like, puddle. <laughs> <laughs> you just dove under a stage and the turned incredible into a melting man <laughs> i said i want to play superheroes because the last two seasons we've been playing very squishy killable characters and episode one nobody changed into a costume and the only thing that that david did as his superhero was turn into a puddle <laughs> um you, we did fight a robot that was being controlled by Larry, a stagehand, who worked on the movie and works with Nick Northcutt. And Gail was fairly successful at, at hurting this robot by, by driving her motorcycle into it. However, Nick Northcutt conveniently hit the killing blow, as it were, <laughs> but we realized that the killing blow was not such... It was actually just deactivated. It was turned off by Larry, as this was all a show... To make Nick Northcutt look like a real hero. Allegedly. Uh, Zach, having turned into a puddle under the stage, discovers the truth. And confronts Nick in front of a sea of adoring fans. Grabs a live microphone and calls him out in front of the world. And before he could punch him in the face... This teenage boy, before he could punch an action movie star in the face, Nick Northcutt <laughs> ran across the football field as fast as he could, <laughs> screaming, no, no, very pathetically. Yeah, it's, that's going to be, uh, that's kind of a career killer. That's, that's we'll a, see you about know you that. Think we still have a whole season think. to play, and there's plenty <laughs> of Nick true. Northcutt, folks. This is his, I got couch, plenty. This is his couch jumping moment. Yeah, yeah, I got plenty Nick that. Northcutt in the tank. Don't worry about it. <laughs> He's got a whole arc. I didn't actually plan on him getting discovered in episode one. Um, <laughs> but I, I didn't expect you to run. and Because there was a moment where you were like, hey, can I run and like hide under the stage? I was like, it's going to look a little suspicious if you go under the stage and your superhero form comes out. <laughs> But you did it anyways and then discovered I thought that was a good enough excuse for you guys not to realize Larry was under there doing the doing controlling the robot but you went for it anyways and here we are sussed him out here we are a sea of reporters attack Zach Lapidus this boy looking for answers looking for clarification and in comes his mother who takes him out, protects her son, and says, by God, we're going to get some tacos before this shit gets crazy. And while Zach is laying in bed, slowly falling asleep after the adrenaline of tonight's events have eventually worn off, the exhaustion overtakes him, Gracie Hartwell is a loop 
superstar. Loop being a social media network, much akin to YouTube, for those who have heard of YouTube <laughs> and need the reference. It's like that, but a little different. Link and sync. Link and sync, baby. Gracie Hartwell is a stunt woman who is working on this film, and she has spent a good chunk of tonight giving a statement to the police as to what happened tonight. Getting a wound on her shoulder looked at from this robot that blasted her with this kind of electric pulse. Her skin's a little tender and red, having been jolted by this robot. When our story opens tonight, she is standing on the roof of a building. She is no longer Gracie Hartwell. She is the masked hero known as Labyrinth. And she is across the street from the police station where she knows Larry the stagehand is any minute now going to emerge and she has some questions for Larry Gail could you describe for us what Labyrinth looks like Labyrinth uh, like Gracie has black hair uh, she lets it curl up. Usually um, she straightens it during the day as Gracie. Um, and usually by the end of the day, it's gotten the natural curl has come back. Um, she is wearing just a black demi mask over her eyes. So, you know, very bandit style. Um, she has a black cape um, over a slate blue dress. Um, the dress has slits that go high up the legs to allow for movement. Um, it's very flowy. Um, she also has long sleeves that are also very drapey and flowy. Um, and the top plunges deeply in um, a cultural nod to where she learned her, or where she trained as a warrior of the snake. Um, this is a uniform, if you will, um, as a warrioress of the snake. And um, only the mask and the symbol on her back are her own. Um, on the back is a uh, labyrinth symbol, um, not the um, kind of uh, shark cathedral labyrinth, but the Minoan uh, labyrinth. It's a lot, looks a lot more like a coiled snake. Um, and uh, it, the cape is also short for movement's sake, but she can pull a couple cords and it will lengthen and cover her up totally. You're standing on the roof of this building, Labyrinth, and the wind, that cool night wind, we're in late September, Solis Bay. You can hear it's Friday night, late at this point. You can hear the sounds of the city as people are going to theater shows, plays, going to the club. You look down and you see Larry exit the precinct, looking disheveled, puts his hoodie up. And a, uh, a car eventually comes and picks him up. I um, sort of cat vault down, which is basically kind of um, landing on four um, hands and feet down the side of the building on the alley, down the windowsills and fire escape. And then... Yeah. Uh, get on uh, my black motorcycle, not my blue motorcycle. The blue one was, was hurt. mildly damaged. I'm very upset about earlier it. Earlier tonight, but this black one is... Ready to go. The Labyrinth. 
one, right? Like, this is specifically for superhero shit. Yeah. You ride this motorcycle trying to tail this car, and it's not, it's not hard at all. You're driving through alleys, side streets, keeping an eye on where this car is in your peripheral. As you're not exactly following it, you're kind of running parallel to it. And then you speed down the street and see that they are pulling into a hotel. This is the hotel where Larry stays at during the movie shoot. What would you like to do? He's getting out of the car and he's on the sidewalk. And he just looks exhausted. He's been grilled. This night did not go probably how he, he thought it would. Cons- considering um, that I've been on the movie shoot, do I know where he is in the hotel? Uh, Maybe. you. No, no, probably not. There's a lot of people in the movie. You may not know specifics. Like off the top of your head, you wouldn't know. Um, I'm going to park my bike in an alley, and I'm going to activate my invisibility. Yep. I close my eyes and concentrate on the minds surrounding me and make them see no one there. The way Labyrinth's invisibility works is that she is able to cloud the minds of human beings around her so that they don't realize this masked vigilante, for lack of a better word at the moment, is and beautiful walking amongst them. And you are following, you are following Larry up to his room and he has no idea you're right behind him. But if someone were to be looking at the security cameras, mm-hmm. they would see clearly you yeah in the building yes i can't i can't pull a camera just a mind but you feel this is worth the risk yes all right larry opens up his he takes out his his card slides it in the little reader opens up his hotel room, goes inside, and you hear him go, fuck, and then, like, fall down on the bed as the door is slowly closing shut in front of you. Yeah, it's one of those (laughs) those hotel kind of slow closed doors. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Allowing time for you to get all your bags in and everything. Uh, Yeah, I very quietly slide in. Yep. You slide in. And you slip inside and he's just laying there face down his, his <laughs> on the bed, not moving. He's, he's just like kind of moaning to himself, letting out these like painful sighs. Of, oh. Oh. You know, I make my way over so that where I position myself where I know like when he sits up, I'm going to be the first thing he sees. So are you turning off and your invisibility when you... Once I'm in position, I turn off my... Like... Sick. Yeah. All right. Got to come up with like a cool sound. I'll come up with a sound effect where it's like... <laughs> invisibility on, invisibility off. Yeah. He, uh, he sits up and he like just, it's so labored. He rolls over and then sits up. And he blinks. I cock my head to the side. Oh, hey. Are you... Hey, look, I don't know nothing, okay? Look, I already told the cops. You're a labyrinth, aren't you? I'm labyrinth. I am. This is beneath you. 
Isn't it? I don't know anything. Nothing is beneath me. You have no idea the mysteries I've solved. Look, I told the cops it was Nick's idea. It's on Nick. It okay? was Nick's idea. It's on Nick. Can you tell me what you know of Nick's plan? And when you say that, he slumps his shoulders <laughs> and the large window across from you explodes inwards. <gasps> And this figure oh my gosh. <laughs> blurs into the room. I want to, I want to like get in front of Larry. Uh huh. Between Larry and the, the blur. It's like okay. my instinct. Okay. Here we go. Make a, uh, make a coordination. We're going to call it a coordination check, uh, for everybody listening at home, uh, for the audience. Hello, dear audience. Uh, Whenever we are rolling to see if we're successful or not, everybody has stats, uh, prowess, which is fighting, coordination, which is kind of your agility and speed, strength, which is your strength. Come on, you know what it is. Uh, intellect, awareness, and willpower. And they have a set number, and Gail then rolls a d6, adds that to her stat, which for coordination, you are a... I'm incredible in my coordination. I have a seven. So seven. she rolls a d6 and adds it to her seven, and I will roll a d6 and add it to my coordination. Okay. Gail, what did you get? I got a 12. Okay. I got... Oh, no. I got a 12, too. <gasps> That's a marginal success for you, I'm guessing, since yeah. I'm protecting and I'm not... Yeah, exactly. Okay. So whenever we subtract from each other what we got, I got a 12. I subtract Attacker her resistance. The... Okay. That's a zero, a zero. There's a chart. We'll put it on at some point what these numbers mean. Uh, I'll, I'll make something up for folks so they can follow along. But a zero is considered a marginal sec success, which is the baseline. Oh, David's nice. got it right there, a little, little cheat okay. sheet. Uh, barely succeeds. Um, you see this red and white blur get past you, and Larry is kicked and flies into the wall and then falls between the wall and the bed. And there's a huge broken plaster where he just fell. And when you look up, you are face to face with uh, a woman who has white hair except for the ends which are bright red and she has a red and almost bone colored suit on she has a mask covering the bottom half of her face and uh, i'm gonna pull up a little picture of her So that you can see, and I'll share these on our website. Uh, so you can go to getoutofdepth.com if you're a listener and you'll see them. Ooh. You'll see them on uh, our website. So she's got this white hair with like red just along the sides. It's short, just, uh, just a little bit longer than chin length and a red and, and kind of bone colored suit. And she has this weird mask on that has a, almost like a layering, like fish scales almost. That's also yeah. bone colored and you can't see where the mask ends and her skin begins and around her eyes, it looks almost like her skin is red or it's been painted red around her eyes. And she has a, a knife, a large knife that she has pointed down in one arm. And she looks at you with these cold, black, almost silver eyes. Okay. 
what would you like to do? I would like to fee blast her and um, yeah. Uh, so what is that? What it, what are you saying? Uh, it's a it's one of my superpowers. It's I basically am able to whip my body around to create a force out of the air to knock her back. Okay. Um, and in fact, I want to see. I want to use a determination point if I can for a stunt. Oh, what would your stunt be? So everybody gets a, a certain number of determination points. They get those throughout the the game, dear audience. And they can use these for um, bonuses to their roles or maybe use their superpowers in a way that they uh, don't normally do. So think about like the Flash. He runs really fast, but sometimes he can phase through walls. He doesn't do it all the time, but he can do it sometimes. Or at least when I was a kid, he didn't do it all the time. And uh, so that would be using a determination point for her to do a stunt. So what would your stunt be? I would like to change my 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 blast to a shot specifically uh, focused on her hand to shoot the knife out of her hand. So you're calling your shot trying to get this knife yeah. out of her hand. Okay. All right. Yep. All right. And there goes my determination point. Um, Oh, that was a terrible roll. Um, I rolled a one plus eight is nine. Yeah, she. Let's see her. You said nine. Yeah. All right. So that's a negative two, which is a wait. Moderate. Do I add my power to my coordination? No, you that no, doesn't it's stack. Just the use power the better. You can use the the power is your damage. Uh huh. Oh. Okay. So it's your yeah. You you've done it right. Everything you've okay. done is right. Um, yeah, so you go to do that and she zips from one side to the other and you don't even see her move. She's now standing on, if she was on the right side of your face, now she's on the left side of your face mm -hmm. and she is going to, uh, cut at you okay. with this knife. Uh, I rolled and that would be 13. So the question here is, do you want to use coordination to just get out of the way, or do you want to use prowess? Uh, I always use coordination. Okay. Uh, 11. All right, so it's a, um, that's a negative one for me, or a, a plus one for mm -hmm. me, which is a moderate success, which means I um, succeed moderately. And if I'm slashing at you, a moderate, I get the attack damage. You're going to take four uh, stamina points. Uh, that's all my stamina. So you're knocked out? Mm-hmm. Okay. Because I had uh, I have ten total. We lost. I lost six to the robot and four to this lady. Yep. The blood sprays out and you immediately pass out on the ground i think we just killed labyrinth and uh not quite i still have time well it's up to her as your pass as your eyes are starting <laughs> to close and getting you know you're you're losing your sight you see larry mm -hmm. fly out the window how high are we it's a hotel but, seventh floor okay let's get him be downtown it could be anyway goodbye larry. oh goodbye larry and then this red and white figure blurs through the window and disappears after him and you go nighty night yeah i go nighty night I like you were like we we uh we didn't want to be squishy people this season. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Immediately, Labyrinth's first day. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Conscious. 
And you don't have any more determination points or anything like that? No, that, I, no, we only or I only get one per issue. Cool. Oh, I did use a determination point, which when I use one, you get one back, oh, right? Okay. Yeah. So you did get one back. Okay, so I could use one to regain stamina. Yeah, <laughs> you could actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, she can do that when she's unconscious. Well, she I know she can use the determination point to to like stave off dying, but we never did damage below zero, so we're not doing damage to her strength yet, I don't think. Mm -mm. No, it was at zero. I didn't it was get so I just got you to yet. zero. Yeah. So Eh, it's fine. Your eyes kind of go closed for a moment as you're trying to get yourself back up. Mm -hmm. And when your eyes close again, we cut to the morning. Sunshine, birds are singing. Good morning, Solus Bay. Good morning, Zach Lapidus. Zach, you open your eyes and it was like it was a dream. That couldn't have happened last night. You roll over, you look at the clock, it's 8.30 a.m. Your mom let you sleep in. Speaking of your mom, you just hear from the kitchen a terrible scream. And it sounds like your mother. I bolt downstairs as quickly as I can. You go downstairs and you see her smacking a window with a rolled up magazine. And she's like, get the hell out of here. Go get. Oh, my God. Oh, hey, honey. Good morning. Do I see what she was smacking at? You see like a dude who's in between your house and your neighbor's house, like in like where the fence is, where you can go right back. You just see a dude who's got like a, a, a camera wrapped around, like hanging from his neck. And he's like, you got to come out sometime, lady. And he walks off towards the street. And as your eyes follow him going back out to the street, you see vans. And maybe a dozen people with those vans and cameras pointing towards your house. How do they find out where we live? Oh my gosh. I don't, it's their job, sweetheart. That they just, that's what they do. They're vultures. I woke up this morning and it just, it felt like a dream and <laughs> now I'll snap back into reality. I'm so you... sorry, mom. I, I didn't know this would happen. I'm still not really sure what's happening, to be honest. This is all very, what did you see last night? It's all over the news. And she turns on the TV and you see this news anchor last night, 16 year old Zach Lapidus revealed that Nick Northcutt, action movie star extraordinaire, to be a charlatan using a real tragedy to, <laughs> a real tragedy to further his career, to make himself look heroic. And it's showing different like video footage from the, <laughs> where you're like threading him. And it's just like constantly looping him running across that football field while everybody watches by himself. And she turns the volume back down and she goes, that's what it like. That's all anybody's talking about right now. Wow, uh, I don't even, sh should I go out there and talk to them? What, what, what should I even do, Ma? I don't know. I mean, well, if you can't just stay hold up in here. I agree. I mean, I've got a shift starting yeah. in two hours. I... What are you going to do? Well, I... I had some extra credit I was going to go down to the museum and, and do, but I don't even know how to leave the house like this. Okay. Um, let's see. I, I'm really at a loss. 
they, this isn't in the manual for raising kids, you know? Um, I bet if I take my bike out back, I can kind of bike through the fields. They're, they're not going to be able to chase me down in, uh, in their vans through other people's properties, right? Maybe I should go out and tell them to buzz off while you do that. Okay. That'd be great, Ma. Is there anything you need me to bring home? Uh, Jesus. I don't know. Normalcy? <laughs> she laughs. I'll do what I can. And uh, Zach's going to go upstairs and get dressed for the day. And uh, once he's all, all fresh... He's going to try and sneak out the back, grab his bike, and race off. Right by the back door as you're about to exit is a waffle on a plate. Mom's the best. Mama is the best, bro. Yeah, I'm not going to take the plate. I'm just going to grab the waffle, yeah. eat it. <laughs> well, to go waffle. Yeah. She looks at you and she goes, call me and I will come get you. Okay. You got it. Thanks, Mom. Give her a little kiss right. on the cheek. And you, as you're going out one door, you hear her going out the front door, and she's like, all right, you vultures. <laughs> you want to talk to somebody, you got to talk to me and only me. He's just a boy. And she <laughs> emerges. She's wearing like a ripped up T-shirt. It's, a, it's, a, it's an old Kiss shirt. <laughs> yeah um that's got like rips in it so you can see <laughs> she was like a real partier back in the day um really dug concerts <laughs> yeah she goes out there violently and your phone is like buzzing in your pocket as you hit your bike and you start weaving through these different uh backyards and alleys through the herd vine neighborhood and you pull out your phone you look at it and you're just seeing like all these news pings that are like loops of people reacting to what you did the actual video of what you did uh, a couple of texts from friends who are just like you okay <laughs> you know like yeah omg what what the fuck just happened you know and uh, where are you going? So I think I'm going to try and uh, pull my bike over once I'm kind of away from the house and find like just a, uh, a place to a place to be like totally alone. I don't know if I can just find like a little alley with, you know, between yeah, two dumpsters no, that's or not, something. That's not too hard. So because there's so many people... Uh, like looking for me, I think today is going to be a safer day to be someone else. So okay. uh, I am going to use my shape shifting abilities to turn into Jackson Jones. Okay. Yeah. You look like wide receiver for the Malconian Stompers, uh, star football player Jackson Jones. Good looking yeah. kid, strong, athletic. Yeah. And then I'm going to hop back on my bike and I'm going to uh, go to the museum to try and just get a bit of normalcy, take my mind off of things, and try and raise my grade out of a, 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 a poor level that I'm doing in history right now. All right. You go to the museum. The museum is it, it's kind of far away. Right, it's a long ride. Oh, you're right. Yeah, like how many miles away would this be? Uh, I, I several. I mean, it, it would maybe fifteen. Ooh, okay. Yeah, that's a lot. Are you taking like a bus or? Yeah, uh, I'll, <laughs> like I'll, pro I'll probably get on some public transit then. Definitely yeah. some public transit. Yeah. You don't want to go to that museum with swamp ass first. No. You know I mean? like, <laughs> You want to try and keep the ass dry before you get to the yep. museum. Don't want that, yeah. Yeah. 
So you hop on a bus and everybody is looking down at their phone, replaying. You you can hear your voice echoing <laughs> all the time, being like, this was for Polymorph. This wasn't about you. You're just a charlatan. And you just keep hearing this over and over as people are talking about it. They're like, oh, my God, I can't believe that kid did that. What a jerk. And another person's like, what do you mean he's a jerk? And they're like, Nick Northcott was just trying to be, trying to put on a show for people, right? And they were like, no, that guy was an asshole. And another person's just like, listen, Nick wouldn't do that. Nick is a great guy and he has done so much for kids all around the world. Like there are kids who were dying and he went and visited them. I bet if this kid was dying, Nick Northcote would have visited him. This kid wasn't even dying. He came to his high school. And the guy's like, are you saying that you need to be dying in order for somebody to give a shit about you? And she's like, no, I'm just saying Nick Northcutt gives a shit about dying people. And you can tell this conversation is like, this is my stop. I'm done. I'm yeah. done with you. And you're uh, so this Even is if like, it wasn't, the, he like switches buses, like hoping for, you know, it's just the whole conversation up again. <laughs> Another guy gets on. Holy shit. Did you guys see this stuff about Nick Northcutt? Everybody on the bus ready for this? And he pulls out his tablet. It's like 15 inches. It's like a TV out of his backpack. It's a foldable one. Right? It's like one of those OLED foldable ones. And he like holds it out. He's like, look at this. And you're just watching this event replay again. This is the craziest shit I've seen in years. Those kids got a show last night. Yeah. Uh, Zach is just like so overwhelmed of like, he's been a superhero for like a year now. Yeah. And this is, this is the most heat that he's ever had was when he was actually just being himself to out ousting some soup, uh, you know, some movie star. He's, he just can't believe it. <laughs> this girl who's sitting next to you on the bus She's everybody's watching this guy holding up his screen. Like this is the exact moment when you could see Nick Northcutt's spirit leave his body. <laughs> and this girl turns to you and she's like, "It's kind of pathetic, isn't it?" Yeah, I, I don't know why everyone's so obsessed about it. He's just some movie star. Well, I mean, he's not just some movie star. I mean, he's Nick. He's Northcutt. Nick Northcutt. I know, but you know, there's actual heroes out there that are risking their lives to save people, and he's just pretending. Yeah, that, I mean, that's what I think too. I'm, I'm, I agree. Like, but that kid, man, yeah. Must take real courage to do something like that in front of all those people. Yeah. I wonder if he regrets it the day after. Oh, I didn't even think about that. I bet his life is crazy right now. Yeah. I mean, I I go to school with Zach. He, <laughs> he's usually just someone that wants to blend in. Hard to blend in with that. You go to school? Were you... Were you there last night? And everybody turns around and goes, <laughs> Hey, were you at the school last night, bro? And the guy folds up his his foldable <laughs> tablet that's like 30 inches when it's opened up all the way. <laughs> and uh, stuffs it into his duffel bag. And he says, Young man, Malcony and I? Go Stompers. You were there last night. 
I was. So? Do you know the kid? You're saying his name's Zach. Yeah, I, 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 I know Zach. Not, not well, but yeah, I, I know him. Is he a good kid or what? Because we got a little debate going on whether or not this kid was just trying, like the whole thing was a conspiracy with this kid. Uh, what he's saying has, has got to be true. Zach wouldn't lie about something like that. Polymorph was, you know, his favorite hero. He was obsessed with him, and uh, I, I could see him after, after the fact, and he was obviously just so furious that someone would try and take that day and turn it into some publicity stunt, scare people, you know? It wasn't right. Nick Northcutt, I mean, I used to love Nick Northcutt, but he's, he's done. I'll never watch another thing of his again, if he ever is even able to make a movie again. Oh, man. Got some strong feelings. And then somebody stands up and goes, holy shit, it's that kid's mom. And they're holding up their phones, and you just see your mother going like, get the paper <laughs> off my lawn. And it's just like <laughs> it's just like a string of expletives that they are having trouble uh, covering <laughs> over as she's like oh you want it back you want it back and she's got some guy's camera and she just spikes it on the asphalt and she's like <laughs> go get it now go get it now what <sighs> this kid's mom is fucking crazy man she might be the real story <laughs> oh, i sure hope she doesn't get arrested oh jeez, mom the bus stops you see the Herbert Museum of History. Well, time to go. <laughs> Give a little see you later to these people and uh, head out the side door of the bus. Uh, you exit the bus. And this is uh, towards the center of town center of Solus Bay, this academic area and legislative area, there's a large, um, you see these uh, municipal buildings and uh, some of the campus buildings for Solus Bay University. The Herbert Museum is a, a brown stoned building with these huge columns and arches at the front. And there's a sign, uh, a large banner draped from the top talking about tonight's opening gala for uh, the new uh, occultism exhibit. And it's all this kind of spooky, you know, it, it's the spooky fonts, like the Halloween fonts and stuff. And it, it's kind of gearing up for this fall time period to to show uh, this this new exhibit. Uh, but there's a big gala tonight uh, to celebrate. Um, now, uh, Professor Conrad for the extra credit, he just said I needed to like bring a, a ticket in from the museum, basically, to yeah. kind of show it. But what specifically did he want me to kind of take a look at for for the for the class? If you can, if you can, like, just write a little something about what you saw and experienced, just to know that you had thoughts about it and opinions. Yeah. And but he and... specifically wanted me to take a look at the occult like uh, exhibit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. All right. Uh, yeah, I, I'm gonna go inside. Uh, Go up to the, you know, is, is it free for residents or, uh, you know, do I get pay here? <laughs> is it free? You know, it is absolutely not free. It, oh, it costs money. It. All right. You know, it's $20, $20. All right. Yeah. Uh, I pull out my, my debit card and realize like, it's probably not best to, to use, use this card now that everyone knows my name today and I'm in a different body. So I, I get some cash and, uh, Okay. Get Hit up the ATM. That's right. Four dollars and seventy five cent charge. Ah oh, man. To withdraw twenty bucks. Oh dear. Yeah. You get a you get a phone call from your bank. <laughs> you just overdrafted by like two dollars. 
Um. <laughs> yeah, let's role play that conversation. Get this uh, superheroes. This <laughs> superheroes. <laughs> no one wants this. No one wants this. <laughs> no one. <laughs> No listener wants to hear this. that sound. It's all the listeners cutting out. They're just no. Yeah, I think like I bus. think no. It was just you no. Know, you just say like I think it was stolen by Jackson Jones. It's fraud, fraud protection. Um, no, I'm not at the museum. You uh, yeah. You withdraw your your cash and you go into the museum and you can see like there's workers uh, up on the other floors. They're preparing for tonight's gala. So when you go into the main floor, the main hall of this museum, it's a very tall, almost three-story room that has a ceiling that is covered in triangular glass. And they're connected at different angles, so they form like almost uh, like hills made of triangles and they're big panels. They're big triangular panels, like uh, 18, 20 inches. Is this what the ceiling is made this of? That's what the ceiling is. So okay. it forms this crazy crystal blue, almost like water. And the reason it looks like that is because hanging from the ceiling, because hanging from the ceiling is a, a, a vast array of marine life skeletons. You can see stingrays hanging from the ceiling. You can see seals and sea lions, and they're all surrounding a very massive whale skeleton. Uh, so when you look up, it's almost like a sea of uh, marine skeletons swimming through a, a crystal sea above you. And on this first floor, you they have set up this occult exhibit for tonight and the uh there's people kind of looking around and checking stuff out and there's gonna be a big party tonight so you can see that there's a lot of workers who are busy trying to get things really nice and pretty for this evening and there's like a limited window this is kind of like a soft open a limited window to to observe these these artifacts Um, yeah, I, I haven't been here since a field trip like, you know, five years ago. So it's, it's, uh, kind of cool to be in such a place like this kind of on my own here. And, uh, I will start wandering around the, uh, exhibit that they're setting up here. Yeah. You're walking around and you see a glass case that has this, um, uh, this horn it's uh rounded and comes to a, a point it has a little hook to it and all over the horn are these geometric shapes that uh, are patterned and woven together over this silver horn and you see a little placard in front of the glass case that says this is the horn of diocles Yeah, I'll uh, take out like a little notebook and just kind of like read the plaque and like take some notes about it so I have something to write about. Yeah. It talks about how it comes from like a time period where this type of like it's it's dated for a time period that doesn't seem to match the craftsmanship. Like it's it's mysterious in that there were no techniques to make a horn like this at the time that they believe it was discovered Got it. So or that it was manufactured. A, it's kind of a historical anomaly of like, yeah. how did they, how a did little they spooky this? mystery. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a lot of people are gathered around a, another display nearby and they're just like gawking at what's inside. There's maybe six, seven, eight people surrounding it. You go over there and you see this book and the book has, it's a large book with this shriveled, wrinkled leather 
it's puckered in places and you can see yellowed um, not even yellow it's it, you can see almost brown tannish paper sticking out and on the cover of this book embedded into the leather looks like a glass picture a picture of uh, like a glass picture that's cloudy like there was some kind of art or something made under it because photographs didn't really exist back then but it looks like there's some kind of effect was made with like a glass panel embedded on this book and it's a it's a blue green kind of color depending on the light you can see clouds of dark green and if you look from a different angle you can see the light catching reds and oranges it's really a very surreal looking tome uh is this in the horn of diocles are they like from the same culture the same era or no they... no no they're they're separate yeah um is it like surrounded in a big glass case or is it yeah uh, it's a massive black uh it's a massive glass case that is settled around this podium and uh it it says uh, it's called the book of unknown devils book of unknown devils does the plaque say like like what part of the world it's from and like uh it says that it was discovered by a man uh decades and decades ago yeah and his story was that it was given to him by the gods and this would have been the early 1900s in norway mm. and the material of it has been kind of hard to carbon date but it seems like it's hundreds of years old but the glasswork itself is something that doesn't seem to make sense for that time period I, either. Wow. Uh, I'll I'll try and uh, there's like some sort of museum of employee all around. I'll be able, I'll I'll kind of ask him of like, do they have any idea how something like this was made? You you ask it out loud. There's a person standing by who's discussing some things with with other patrons, and they said, "No, it's a lot of mystery. I mean, there's a lot of theories as to how it was made. Some people think that the the man who discovered it forged it. It's a hoax. But a lot of the science shows that it's kind of imp if if he forged it, it was he's the greatest one ever <laughs> to do such a thing." Yeah, this is crazy. I've never seen anything like it before. And you hear a man standing over here. He's been looking very intently at this book. And he says, no, this is not a mere forgery. This is the genuine article. What, what does the Book of Unknown Devils, what is this even supposed to do? And you see the the museum worker about to start and the man steps over that person it is a book that in theory can summon different planes of existence into reality one could even remake their own reality It's all fairy tales, I suppose. 
But what if, hey young man, what if indeed? Well, there's a lot of things that people thought were impossible 20 years ago that clearly aren't. So I guess we can't always close the door on what can happen, huh? Oh, indeed. There's proof more and more every day that the impossible can be made possible. Yeah, I feel that every day. And he turns and looks at you, and he's this very gaunt-faced, he's got white hair on top that's um, very thin. His eyes are sunken, and he has these uh, light blue eyes. And he looks very deeply at you, but he doesn't say a word. And it's almost like he's looking through you to something else. And the more he stares at you, the more it feels like there is nobody else in this room anymore. There is no room anymore. It is just you and him. Oh, like it seems to be affecting me? Yeah. Oh, wow. And you can just hear like your heart beating. It's thumping. And then it, the world starts to slowly rain back in around you. And you can hear voices that you didn't hear just a moment ago mid conversation. It's like you went to a different place. And the old man standing there staring at you and he goes. You're a different type of kid. You're pretty different yourself. What did you just do to me? And he swiftly starts to take off. He's got his cane and he's just moving at a brisk pace. I'll follow him, and it's like, just kind of bit louder. It's like, what was that? What what did you do to me? I don't know what you're speaking of. I, I think you do, and I... Do, do I feel different at all? Do I feel... No. No, it's, no, no. Yeah, do just I a get little any surreal. Sense of, it was just a little do weird. Do I get any sense of what he was doing when he... No. Kind of it was just kind away? of like you... It was almost like it was hypnotic, like you were just kind of yeah. there. Yeah. It's kind of like you just zoned out. Uh. Sorry, son. Good day. Good day to you. Uh, and he turns to start going towards the exit. I'm going to see if I can kind of uh, stealthily, you know, follow him a little bit to see where he's going. He exits. And you try to follow behind him. I'm going to have, I'm going to roll his awareness. Not that he has stats or anything. He's just a regular no name NPC that doesn't yeah, yeah. have yeah, no. stats. Don't worry about that. Yeah, you wouldn't. Would I have to roll? I mean, you're just using the generic, you know, or a, a, a general would, human yeah. is a four. Yeah. 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 So would I uh, roll you, coordination? You could use coordination. Yeah, yeah. Roll roll coordination. Uh, D6 plus coordination. That's an eight. All right. I got a nine. And you're you're like trying to to follow this guy, and this limo pulls up, and he the doors open, and he turns around as this guy is letting him sit into the, uh, ushering him into the limo, 
and he locks eyes with you. You're like hidden behind this column and he sees you and he wags his finger at you and the door closes and as it takes off, you see his license plate. I'm going to write it down. It's real easy. Yeah. It says biology. <laughs> biology. And that's where we're going to take a break. All right. Hey, what's up, everybody? How's it going? We're playing a superhero game. Gail's dead. Uh, her character's dead. <laughs> and if you want to support this... <laughs> <laughs> if you want to support uh what we're doing here we have produced two seasons of actual play podcast i think we're pretty damn good and you're now watching us produce a third one and uh next year we're going to do a fourth fifth and sixth and so on until uh i get tired or gail makes that face and i guess no i guess i guess we're done at four and uh <laughs> and if you're watching us and you're like man what can i do for these people they're so cool, giving me all this free, awesome, actual play stories. I should give something back to them. Well, there's a couple ways you could do that, friend. First of all, you could just recommend us to your friends. Other people who are in actual plays, let them know about it. That's all we really want. We want to put this show into people's ears, and you can help do that for us. Uh, if you're uh, listening to us, if you're listening to us on a website, or if you listen to our podcast... You uh, leave a review, that'd be super sweet. That just helps us get even more listeners and uh, more people who can enjoy our show. What you're listening to right now is the raw... What, if you're watching this, you're watching the raw recording. We I edit this down, add music, sound effects. Apparently, I've got sound effects for Gail disappearing and reappearing when she turns invisible. You want to know what that sounds like? Well, not Gotta listen to the I'm podcast. Dead. And if you, want, yeah, she's dead. So we have a different sound. It's called sad trombone. If you would like to, if you would like to listen to that podcast, you can go to getoutofdepth.com where we have links to and embedded audio players where you can listen to this season or the other two seasons that we've played. Uh, we played Electric Bashland Season 1. We played a fucked up Mothership game for Season 2 that I thought was pretty pretty sweet. Got a lot of really good compliments about that one. But they're all self-contained stories, and you can listen to them there. Or you can just head over to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you like to. There's all kinds of links down the deep below so you can get access to all that. So get out of depth com if you want to do that. If you uh, So you've recommended to your friends... They've all said, man, this is awesome. And you're like, man, I'm feeling pretty good about myself. And I, but I, I just want to do a little bit more Then you can go to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash get out of depth. And you can pledge. Is that what they say? You can subscribe at any level that you want. I can't remember the words anymore. It, I'm, I'm rusty at, at all of this. Mm -hmm. uh, you can uh, subscribe at any level. Uh, any tier that you feel comfortable with for as long as you feel like it's worth it. So if you want to do three bucks for a month, I'll take those three bucks. That'll pay for uh, the drawings that we're making of Labyrinth and Lazarus. The Labyrinth one is about done. Doesn't really look like what Gail wanted to look like, but <laughs> it's a fun jumping off point. If you want to imagine Labyrinth with uh, big boobs. <laughs> yeah, I pictured her a little more athletic. And oh, yeah. no matter no matter I like the boobs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm I'm you know, it's funny, I'm just like, where did these boobs come from? And I'm working through Jay to talk to the artist and he's like, I don't know. Also I as told him aside, smaller boobs. Did did you tell her, yeah? The boob was uh discussed? Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, I see. Uh well I yeah. said they shouldn't be all bunched up. They should just <laughs> fall naturally. And I thought that meant he would maybe make them smaller instead of big cleavage. And instead he was just like, they're big. They're just, I'm just not going to draw the curve of these lines right next to each other. I think as an hey, aside, since we're in the middle of the break, I just want to say, I think guys like boobs way more than girls do. <laughs> and I don't get it. I don't get it. But 
whatever. You know, I, I have fine. to, I, as, as somebody who's not a lesbian, I have to speak for the lesbians, though. <laughs> I think they like boobs, too. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, I, I have no idea. Right. Next time I run into a lesbian, I'll ask her. Uh, I'll be like, do you, do you, is it because of the boobs? boobs? Do you like it as yeah. much as I do? And you had to, <laughs> probably, I would assume so. I would think so, but I don't know. Maybe that's not what they tune in for. Uh, if you want to hear more conversations about what lesbians like by people who are <laughs> uh, hetero, uh, <laughs> then this is your show. Actual that's play boob talk. Exactly. Actual that's talk. what you get when you see the raw recording of this. This won't be on the podcast at all. This is all <laughs> cut out. Uh, and nobody will know. This is just for you guys who want to see this junk. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, the Patreon thing. That, that helps us pay for the drawings. Uh, our artist is about to start working on Lazarus, and I have a feeling it's going to look absolutely nothing like <laughs> what he's oh, picturing really? either. Oh, but who knows? I've sent him a bunch of stuff, yeah. but I got a feeling it's going to look a little bit like Topher Grace from Spider-Man 3. Uh, oh, dear. I don't know why. <laughs> Just a hunch? Yeah. Just okay. a hunch. Uh, yeah. yeah, so patreon.com slash get out of depth. If you are into the world lore stuff and you want to learn more about Solus Bay or uh, Elgon Malconian, who founded the Malconian High School in Solus Bay or any of that other stuff, you can go to our World Anvil page. Uh, links are down in the deep below. Uh, I'm not going to make Gail put it up there. It's just a long mess of stuff. We're on. The, yeah, just type all that in. We need to get a bit.ly, Gail. Okay. We need a bit.ly link for the... You, you do it. That's right. I am the producer, too, right? I, mean, I should do this. Okay. I will also do it. No, it's fine. I'll take care of it, guys. It's fine. It's <laughs> David, that's what I'm talking about. Show me your leadership capabilities. Uh, that's Go a find my hairdresser. Show me your leadership capabilities. That's a little joke for Gail and uh, all the people like Bill Haver. Uh, I think and that's Arnold it. Schwarzenegger. Are we done? Yeah. Did I do it all? Did I, get, yeah. did I get through all of the stuff? I think so. I think you got more than the amount of stuff we wanted to get through. Okay. And... We're back. Labyrinth. You are sitting in a hotel room and you hear a knock at the door. You get up and the carpet sticks to your chest from this wound. Go ahead and use that determination point. That's gone. I get to use my, um, or I get to recover the amount of the greater of my strength or willpower. So I will recover my willpower amount, which is six. Okay. How are you going to get out of here? <sighs> um, I'm going to activate my invisibility. And there's usually a little nook um, where the closet is in a hotel room, like yeah. between that and the dresser. That, like you could like put a piece of luggage but like not much more yeah I'm going to go stand over there you stand over there these people walk in oh my god what's look at all that blood on the floor and police come in after him it's the concierge and they're looking around and they don't see this wounded labyrinth slinking out of the out behind them into the hallway you can see other police officers are putting tape up so that people don't cross into this hotel room Where 
where you want to go right now? As I get, like, out in the hallway. This is still the night before, by the way. This is yeah. still Friday, yeah. Yeah, we've gone, we've gone backwards. Yeah. We've gone backwards in time. Um, do I see any cameras anywhere? There are... Um, <laughs> Not in the hallway, no, no. Okay. Okay. Um, I uh, go to the elevator. All right. And I kind of wait for it just to open. Um, and stay on it until it kind of empties on some floor before I press lobby. There's definitely a camera in the elevator. Can I tell where it's pointing? Is it like, because there's not multiple, right? No, it's just one. It's pointing into the, the elevator. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I know, like, but I mean, like, I it could It is filming people in the elevator. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I could technically stand under it and they wouldn't, it wouldn't see much. Or no. If you want to stand, like, with your back to it, like, mm -hmm. put your hair into it or something, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Slide and do that. Ding. Lobby. Make sure that I'm not going to bump into anybody and slink out. Okay. Get to my bike. You wake up the next morning thinking about how you did all this. How miserable it was. And how something fast as hell. You weren't at your best. No. You were wounded. You maybe took on too much. I figured nobody would care about this guy. I was wrong. You were wrong. You wake up, you turn on the news... A lot of people talking about Zach Lapidus, Gracie Hartwell, and I guess you sl you sleep in pretty late because you had a rough night. And they're also talking about Mrs. Lapidus, <laughs> how she attacked an entire mob of paparazzi early Good this for morning. For you, Miss Lapidus. Your phone is going absolutely bananas right now. check my phone who do you think is the person who has called you the most chris chris and claude it's it's pretty even but chris like chris more. is up by one one extra missed yeah. call more than claude yeah do you want to talk to anybody i mean is it is is it just is it a ton of texts is it missed calls is there is somebody buzzing now it's text like, hey, where you at? Where you at? Call me, call me, call me. Um, I text Claude real quick and say, I'm fine. We'll talk in a bit. And I call Chris. Yeah. As you're dialing Chris, you get a text back from Claude that says, I'm five minutes away. <laughs> Shit, okay. Hey, what's going on? Holy shit, what a night. Yeah. Yeah. You all right? I mean, I'm guessing you saw. Yeah. Did you know that was going to happen? No. No. Chris. What? I'm just asking. Why would you think I would know about this? I don't. There's a lot of questions. And they, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on in the news about this. I don't know what to say. I'm just asking. Are they saying that I was involved? There's the only person who's spoken to the media because they can't find the kid. Awesome. Good for him. Yeah, but they found his mom and she's the only one speaking and she's a little. She's she's a bit much. I've been watching this stuff. Did she say I did it? No, no, no. no. But like okay. nobody is saying anything. And apparently the guy who was under the stage. Jumped out a window last night. Larry. 
Yeah, Larry. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess I missed some text from Daphne, too. Um, okay. <sighs> hey, do you need me to come over? Tonight? I, I'm going to this gala thing tonight. Do you need a you date? No, no, no. No, it's okay. Okay. After? <laughs> um, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Are you, are you going to be home? At your home. You're going to... Oh, you want to come to my place? Yeah, I mean. All right, well, I got to clean up, but uh, whatever. No, you know, I don't care. Okay. Okay. All right, I'll stop by. Okay, I'll see you later tonight. All right, talk to you later. Knock at the door. Open the door. Claude. What? The shit, girl. You look awful. I feel awful. You look pale. I am pale. What are we going to do? I I need to, I need to, I need to like make a statement. It sounds like, um, or something. I, I, Maxine's writing one right now. Jeez. Okay. If you make it to the studio, we can film something. Okay. We can get out ahead of it. And I'm going to be honest with you. This could be really big for you. Because I got a phone call from the studio. They're thinking about replacing Nick. With? Gracie Hartwell. What the? Claude? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're probably not going to get paid as much as him. Oh, he would have, yeah, right? obviously. Because I mean, that's got to be a perk. Because then they're going to have to do a lot of legal fees to show how they weren't involved with between Larry and me and Nick being there. And oh stuff. my yeah. god, did you hear about Larry? I heard about Larry. He jumped out a window, and nobody can find Nick. Yeah. <sighs> okay. 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 I don't yeah. know what to do about all this. All right. I, um, can you can you get uh, order me my my coffee and protein shake for a uh, pickup, and I'll I'll get dressed. Yeah. And you can you grab my makeup? Absolutely. I'm way ahead of you. I've got everything. All right. All right. We've been doing this for a while now. <laughs> I kind of know what you need. I know, babe. Okay. All right. And she pulls out this muffin that has like this cream cheese cube in the middle of the... Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yes. Are you thinking of the Starbucks pumpkin muffin that has just... I don't know what a Starbucks is. What is that? Oh, you're right. We're not in that universe. So you're no, no. I like. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Just in regular. You just sound really dense right now. <sighs> okay. You're dense. <laughs> All right. I get dressed. I uh, kiss uh, my pet ball python, Madame Zarita, on the head. and set Did her you just low key slide in a python into this story? Oh, yeah. She's Nonchalantly pet... just put a. David, did you hear that? I have a pet python. She's very self sufficient. It happened. Yeah. She is self sufficient. A python is self. What does that mean? Well, I mean, she only needs to eat once a week, and to be honest, I let her loose in the apartment, and she eats the mice. Because, I mean, I can't afford a really nice apartment. Okay. Yeah. 
All right, that's a thing. Sweet. Yeah, or, no, that's fine. There's a python now. That's cool. I even have a leash for her. Like, that's something I do in my videos sometimes that I take her for is that, a slither. Is that what people do with pythons? They put them on leashes? Yeah. Did you look this up? Uh huh. Oh my god. This is crazy. Okay. Was this not in the character questionnaire? I oh, missed. I think ask. I missed the Python, dude. I missed the Python. <laughs> Wait, what did you just say? You didn't ask. You didn't ask if I had. What a game Python. are you playing right now? Okay. <laughs> What's the name of the Python? Could we could we say the Python's name a bit more? Uh, Madam Zorita. Z -O -R -I -T -A. Madam Zorita. Yeah, Madam Zorita. It's a male Python. No, it's female. Okay. And she's yellow, like a yellow by ball okay. Python. Yeah, very sweet. I think Jake the Snake's second python was yellow, too. Hmm. Don't think about it. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, David, what do you want to do with the rest of your day? Gail, you think about what you want to do with the rest of your day. If you don't want to do anything until the gala, you don't have to do anything. We don't have to role play all this stuff. Okay. Oh, uh, Zach's going to grab a gyro, you know, get a nice... Uh, Nice little snack. A gyro? Definitely yeah, a overdrafted gyro. now. For sure. <laughs> and I it's think... It's not gyro? It's a gyro. Yeah. Some no, people say gyro, it's gyro. A, That's not what gyro. I said. I didn't say either. I said gyro. Gyro. Is it not gyro? It's gyro. That's not, that's not how Zach says it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> 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 oh, this is gonna be great. This is gonna be so great. Cool. <laughs> My character is Greek. Gail's character is Gail's character is literally Greek. Like that Gracie was... Hartwell is her stage name. Yeah. <laughs> this is gonna yeah, be great. Okay. Uh okay. and kind of knowing it's inevitable that he's gonna have to like make a statement or something like that. He, he's gonna he's gonna go to the police station downtown and and just like answer whatever questions they you've turned back into zach and you're going uh, to the police station he's going to yeah i probably in like the the gyro uh you know the the, the bathroom of the gyro place he'll, he'll he'll change back and uh yeah head, head to the police station and just like all right whatever questions you have i'll fucking answer uh yeah you get there and they're like just hang on a second okay we gotta get your mom in here we, and uh we can't have you we can't we can't um question a minor without your parent present oh, I, w I didn't even think about that yeah i yeah give her a call yeah i mean she has a shift i i might just need to come back a different time oh man it's really tough for us as a police officer because we just re like we got you here now. Mm. You know what I mean? No, I I hear you. I just I you know, she she works two jobs. It's it's not easy for her to step away. No, I hear that. I hear that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's just that like I've got like a ton of questions for you, man. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you got like a public defender or something that can like just be in the room while I just answer questions or something oh man we're getting into like Gail says no that's not legally good no it's not no it's not I mm -hmm. mean if they did it everything would get thrown out um yeah but I they could you, I, make an appointment yeah I tell you what I tell you <laughs> what we've got we've got a detective they'll, they'll come out to your house we heard you <laughs> we heard you guys have been dealing with some paparazzi yeah, is there anything you can do about that? Can yeah, you... man. Uh, okay. I tell you what, we're going to send a detective over later tonight to okay. uh, protect the paparazzi from your mother. And and uh, and they'll ask you their questions, okay? How about that? Okay, that works. I heard that guy ran, like... I haven't watched the video because everybody's watching the video. And like, I don't want to, I don't want to just watch it because everybody's watching it. I'm kind of contrary in that way, you know? Yeah. No, uh, there's a lot of Nick Northcutt that's fake, but he can run fast. Dope. I want to tell my kids he said that. 
Off the record. Off the record. Yeah. All right. Have a good day. Have a good one, son. Did you guys see that? <laughs> Everyone's <laughs> talking about you as you walk out the door. Um, yeah. Is there anything you guys want to do today? Uh, I Not think really. that's the only thing Zach was going to do is go down to that museum. So I, I guess if, uh, I, I think he, he like often has, he has like a police scanner app and he'll like, you know, just kind of have his headphones in and kind of listen to that. And if anything crazy is happening that he can, he can uh, help out as, as Lazarus, he might uh, respond to th- and, you know, jump into action. Okay. Yeah. Gail, you got anything? Um, I do want to give my statement. What's your statement? I um Hey everyone. As many of you may have seen what was supposed to be the simple can can motorcycle stunt that I practiced for you all in honor of polymorph turned out to be a, a catastrophe. I plan on sharing the video and uh, breaking down what happened in the course of the next few weeks, but first I felt like I needed to make a statement about what happened. First and foremost, I'm okay. I was shot by what appeared to be a villainous robot but it was mostly an electric shock that, um, while it threw me off and stung like hell, is healing. I did also hurt myself in my fall and got a bad cut, but and my favorite green jacket is ruined and my bike will be in the shop for a while, but I'm okay. Second, I think you all deserve to know what happened. From what I've gathered, the events occurred like this. I was getting ready to do my stunt at the beginning of the Malconian High School football game when a large robot appeared and started shooting lasers. I was really scared, but then I saw this young man, Zach Lapidus, run to help people, and I realized that I could maybe use my bike to help as well. So I rode up the ramp as I had planned, but instead of flying over the stage, I kicked off my bike so that it landed on the robot. As you're saying this, all the power in the building goes up. Holy shit. What just happened? I don't know. must be like a brownout or something. Hang on. Go, go check it. And she's like yelling at Maxine. Go, go flip a switch. Maybe a fuse or something. Go flip the fuse. Maybe it it kicked over. And then can I see anything? Like what's the studio like? Your phone rings Mm -hmm. and there's an alert. And there's now an alert system for whenever there's like a super powered event. And Zach, you're getting this same ping on your phone that there is a creature at a power plant and it is, it is absorbing the electricity in this town. Guys, it's... This guy again. He did Actually, this last we... month. Do we, do we, have we seen this guy before? Yeah. Spectrum. Back at it again. Hmm. How far away is the power plant? Uh, you could get there on your motorcycle. And it could be way. just a page away. Oh, really? A page away? Okay. Yeah, because I just want to get to something that's not recapping right, cool. the last episode. Uh, all right. Well, I wasn't going to recap. I was done with the recap. I was getting ready to this statement jay anyway do you want to go to it or not 
Okay. Because David's going to go to it. David's it's... down. Yeah, um, Zach is going to find a subtle place to turn into uh, Lazarus, and he's he's psyched. He 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 enjoy he loves he loves being Lazarus. So he's he's heading. heading Zach out. jumps into a nearby construction porta potty. That's right. Pops out as Lazarus. Pew, pew, pew. How does Lazarus get about town? Does he like just swing, or is he like what? Do, what does he do? So does he leap around. Yeah, yeah, he he has he like can coil his legs into these really tight springs and just kind of like launch from like building to building basically. All right, so this purple figure yeah. is bounding from building to building heading towards the power plant. Okay, yeah, what are you doing? If I'm really that close, like I don't, I like I'm not as fast as other superheroes, so I don't go if it's like across town because it doesn't. No, it's not. It's I'm close. Not okay. Um, I have to like, all right. I, I don't have time for this if they're gonna have a brownout. Um, we'll sh- shoot tomorrow. I'll meet y'all here at ten. Jesus, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta go get ready for this gala. Um, okay. Well, thanks, guys. Hopefully the soups figure this out. Oh my god, we gotta get this done. We will. Whatever, we will. whatever, whatever, whatever. You do you. You have a day. Okay. We could do another day. We could do. An, we will. We'll tease it out. Yeah. Right. We'll tease it out. Uh, I'll have Maxine put some tweets up. Yeah, you can even use one of those. I don't know, as a stinger or something. All right. Yeah. You're driving down, and you get to this area where there's like these huge arcs of electricity sparking around the power plant. And Lazarus bounds. You see this purple figure bounding from one building to another and lands in front of you. And you have to like skid your motorcycle to a stop as this purple guy just like shows up in front of you. Do I know Lazarus? Like, no of Yeah, you know him as Polyklutz. Polyklutz? Oh. He kind of looks like Polymorph, but he has two less hands, two less arms. And uh, he has not been quite as successful. He seems like a like a copycat hero. Oh, okay. Ooh, he kind of does, like, similar similar stuff as the original Polymorph, but not all of it. Okay. Have I have I seen Labyrinth yet? You've heard of the name, but you've never seen her, no. No, no, no. But like, do, am I looking? Yeah, at you right? land and you oh. feel the motorcycle skid slide behind you, and some like gravel flies up and hits you in the back. And you're like, the hell! And you realize there's another masked person on a motorcycle. <laughs> Labyrinth? Are you kidding me? Honestly, I've been hoping to team up with you for so long. This is great. Oh my gosh! I I remember watching how you took down Gunk. I'm I'm a huge fan. Seriously. All right, kid. Uh, you have the same abilities as Polymorph. Uh, you know, ish. You know, I, I, I'm. Uh, I can't do everything you can do. You know, you might call me Polymorph Light, but uh, you know, you call the shots. You're the veteran here. Okay. Can okay. are you immune to electrical? Electricity. No. No, sure. I'm, I'm no, not. Me neither. Absolutely okay. Not. All right. Um. Well, I think we have to just uh, hit it with what we got. Do I know anything about Spectrum and its weaknesses? I feel like I ha- I like I've only seen this thing, and I feel like I haven't actually fought him before. Uh, Spectrum is this. He he's like living electricity in a suit, and he's contained in this suit, and so it's just like arcs of electricity bouncing around in this kind of spacesuit. That seems dangerous. Maybe I don't want to hit him with all that I've got. Yeah. <laughs> oh, geez. Okay, okay. Um, Actually. Some cop cars pull up. You guys got this? Because that'd be sweet. I 
I want to use, can I um, make a test of awareness? Um, yeah. Kind of just kind of assessing the situation, assessing what can be done. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Nine. You can hear this like painful sound. Like a vibration happening that's really painful, like screaming. Oh, like. Like somebody's in pain, but it doesn't quite sound human. Mm hmm. Yeah. You look and you can see these generators, and there's like an explosion. And you see, like, there's these sparks flying everywhere. And from the sparks, you see Spectrum in his suit, and he's grabbing a hold of one of these generators. And he's clutching it, and, and you realize that sound is coming from him. It doesn't sound like he's doing okay. Spectrum. I'm going to start to approach. I'm holding out my arms. Yeah. Spectrum. You start walking forward, and... Spectrum, you can hear a voice. It's this vibrational voice that is echoing around this power plant. And he says, something's wrong. Something is wrong. It hurts. Okay, okay. And you see his suit start to expand. Like he's blowing up like a balloon. Oh, Spectrum. Spectrum, put down, put down the, the generator. And he's like, I can't. I'm, I have to eat. And when he says that, he explodes. Oh, I knew it. Make a coordination check since you came over there. She's another one. Uh, eight. Eight. Okay. You are able to describe how you like avoid this explosion of shrapnel and stuff. What it, what does Labyrinth look like when she she ducks out of the way of something? It's um. It's it's very odd. It's a movement that n no one's really seen before. She does a lot of sort of twirling and twisting um to jump out of the way it's very much um compacting and expanding her body is how she fights is to make her seem bigger or small smaller seem bigger than she is but also compress herself um it's it's just very slithery um so with this in particular um she is jumping backwards using some of her parkour ability um, to allow the aerodynamics to rush over her um, so that as it hits her, it's hitting as little of her as possible, mostly just hitting her feet and then sweeping up over her body um, mm -hmm. and then rolling as she comes to a stop. Yeah. Like a snake yeah. swimming through water. Yeah. But you're going through the air. Yeah. Right. You ever seen a snake swim through water? How that moves? Like an eel, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You do that and avoid all this. And uh, Lazarus, you see in the place, like you shield your eyes from this white hot explosion of electricity. And the hairs, well, I guess not the hairs on your hand, but like all the, the little um, pieces of polymorph that have fused to your body, you can feel it like ants crawling all over your skin. And uh, you see before labyrinth does you see her do this flip through the air and before she can land and look at the the spot where the explosion happened where spectrum was you can see that there is another figure there where spectrum formerly was yeah oh um can i uh is it anyone that i would have recognized they're in a black suit. Yeah. They look 
human. They have a human face, black hair, dark skin. You can see an orange light shining on their face. They have a, uh, a kind of collar that's raised up. And they turn and look. And they see all of you. And there's like police officers and you guys. And she lets out another blast. But before she can, you see that she's like charging something in her her arms. She has these gauntlets. And it looks like she is about to just blast you guys away. But did what it would look you guys like want she, to do? Did it look like she blasted out from like inside of him? Seems like it. Yeah, it okay. seems like she is there where he was. Oof. Is Spectrum a hero or a villain? He was a or, villain, yeah. He was a villain. And... Golly. What a conundrum. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Lazarus is going to kind of kind of leap towards her uh, and uh, just say... Uh, so, uh, did you just kill Spectrum? <laughs> did you just kill Spectrum? Did you just kill Spectrum? And, uh, are you going to try and do anything, like, as an action or anything? Because she looks like she's violently about to deal with you all. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, he... I'm just saying that because I'm giving you an opportunity to react to what is about to happen. Uh, I, I am going to extend my arm and launch it at her and see if I can bind uh, her arms so that she can't uh, use these gauntlets. Okay. You want to do your... Um, it's a prowess, right? Uh, oh, no, you're, like, shooting your arm at her, right? Yeah, so this, this is, is my like binding a, like, So your arm is detaching yeah, yeah, from your body. Yeah, my arm is literally, like, detaching and, and turning like into this to my gluey... Body and, and kind of like, yeah, becoming this like kind of bandy kind of thing through the air to try and like, you know, uh, restrain her. Okay. So that's a coordination roll because you're firing at her. Uh, yes. Oh, man. And then, or, or does. Coordination no, no, is shooting. Yeah, but. I do actually have like a binding number here too, though. Uh, the binding is the level at which they are bound. Okay. That's what I have to beat in order to get Got out it. of it. All right. So the coordination. Oh, there we go. 12. Yeah. Cool. You absolutely shoot this arm at her and it's, it hits her in the hands and with such force that her hands go into the ground. Like it sticks them to the ground. And it drops her face first, and this like purple goo is uh, all around her, um, sinking her into the <laughs> into the the concrete uh, ground around you. And uh, uh, yeah, was it a moderate success, massive success? It was a massive success. All right, so she is in a complete hold. Yeah, she's stuck. Labyrinth, what would you like to do? Um. I'm going to uh, activate my invisibility um, and move um, sort of diagonally away, uh, diagonally to the right, but towards um, this person, um, trying to keep myself from my location from being noted. But so you're just more... trying to avoid. Avoid detection and um, also be a little bit closer in case I need to um, surprise this person or take care of them. Okay. Yeah. All right. You, you do that and you see... All right. What would you say the binding level was, Dave? Uh, six. Six. So... It says the, the you're fully restrained and cannot take any physical action except to yeah. escape. 
Could you roll a d6 and add it yep. to that six and let me know what the number is? Sure. Uh, that's a six, so 12. Holy shit. She tries to... She tries to unleash her, her gauntlets, her blasters, and your... Um, your what do we call these things? These like nanites, these polys, these polys. That's what it was. Yeah. These polys, uh, these polys just like absorb this blast. You see them kind of expand and contract around her arms even tighter than they were a moment ago. And she looks up fear her in her eyes, uh, frustration, anger, like all of this cycles so quickly. And she looks up and you hear this, this recorder sound like it's like it's not her voice it's another voice coming from a box around her throat that says you don't understand i have to get the book Uh, what exactly, uh, what, what book are you exactly trying to get, uh, Miss Gauntlet? It is the book of my people. Ah, uh, let me guess. The book of unknown devils? I don't understand that title. Oh. But it is a book of immense power, one that could unmake your entire reality. What did you just do to Spectrum? I'm approaching very yeah. quietly this whole time, just listening. Invisible. What did you do to Spectrum? Is that the gate? Spectrum was the villain you just exploded out from. A villain? Well, then good. Yes? Did you just use Spectrum as a gay? Are you here from another world? Yes. I'm from Casus. What is Casus? It's from a very far away galaxy. And you're in search of a book, and if you find it, you'll do what with it? I have to take it back to my people. We are told that it is in great danger. There is a human on this planet who wants the book. White hair, piercing eyes? I know not. I only know the name that he goes by. What name is that? Nick Northcutt. <laughs> and that's where we're going to end tonight's episode. Oh the great goodness. villain, Nick Northern. Miss Gauntlets. I like Miss your Gauntlets. name. <laughs> okay. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks, everybody, for listening. <laughs> I told you I had more shit with Nick Northcutt. <laughs> He's a great guy. Uh, anyways, thank you all for watching. Thanks, David. Thanks, Gail. Uh, get out of depth dot com, Patreon dot com slash get out of depth, all that other stuff. Fuck it, you're all good. Safe travels. <laughs> <laughs>